December's Hidden History item is one that tells a familiar story, beloved by many since it was first published in 1843, but when you look closer, you'll find that it has a connection to a tragic event that occurred in Georgetown County 126 years ago. Charles Dickens' The Christmas Carol is a story that almost everyone has read, and the movie versions can be found on television every December. Dickens, a struggling writer at the time of its publication, became a household name with the success of this novel about a miserly man who was visited by the spirits of Christmas past, present, and future on Christmas Eve. His life is transformed by the lessons he learns that night, and Dickens loved his main character so much that he would perform public readings of the story he affectionately called The Carol until his own death in 1870, varying the story each time depending on his audience. Our copy of this beloved classic was printed in 1846 with the title Collections of British Authors by German publisher Bernard Toschnitz. Toschnitz published other works by Dickens and his fellow British authors prior to the carol without their approval, but with this new publication, Toschnitz began to seek the author's permission and even began to pay for the rights to the novels he published. There was no clear copyright law at this time and Toshnitz is credited with changing the rules in favor of the writers. His publications were printed at the same time as those in Great Britain, and the publishing company operated for more than 100 years, printing the works of these English-speaking residents on the continent. Our book contains the original 1843 printing of A Christmas Carol, as well as the stories The Chimes, The Cricket on the Hearth, and Pictures from Italy. The popularity of this book throughout Europe and America meant that copies of Dickens' books could be found in the collections of families here in the Low Country. Our copy owes its provenance to the Little Bruce family, specifically Alice LaBruce, the daughter of John and Selina Mortimer LaBruce. Born in 1862, Alice was one of at least seven children who grew up at Oak Hill Plantation on the Waccamaw Neck. Oak Hill had been in the LaBruce family for many years by the time her father John inherited it, but after the Civil War and Reconstruction, the family sold the remaining land to J.P. Steele. By 1906, Isaac Emerson purchased Oak Hill, adding it to the five other plantations he owned to form what is today known as Arcadia Plantation. On October 13, 1893, Alice and her sister Elizabeth were staying with her older sister, Martha LaBruce Flagg, her husband Arthur, and their five young children at their home on Magnolia Beach, north of Polly's Island. By the next day, all had perished in a tragic storm that would take the lives of 15 people and cause great damage in the surrounding area. The worst of the storm happened between 9 and 11 a.m., the waters rising four feet in 10 minutes and reaching the 14-foot mark before it was over. Without an early warning system, Residents of these barrier islands often had little time to evacuate, and this unnamed storm of 1893 would be remembered for generations as the storm that claimed the lives of so many beloved residents of Georgetown County. Alice LaBruce's name and date, 1881, are written in the front of the book, barely legible after so many years. The name John LaBruce also appears, and it could refer to her father or another member of her family. Little of Alice's story is known as she never married and died at the age of 31. She and other members of her family are buried at Oak Hill Cemetery, today part of Arcadia Plantation, and the graves are not accessible to the public. Today, news of disasters is almost immediate, but in 1893, the citizens of Georgetown had to wait almost a full day to know the details of the loss of life and property from the storm. Survivors told of the houses and property being washed out to sea while they clung to trees and debris, the few structures remaining on Polly's Island and Magnolia Beach after the waters had receded. Much of the area rice had been harvested, but was still destroyed as water swept away the barns that stored this important crop. 
Alice's other brother-in-law, Colonel Samuel M. Ward, was a South Carolina senator and quickly traveled to Magnolia Beach hoping to find good news of his extended family, but could only deliver news of tragedy to his wife and her family. Between October 15th and October 23rd, eight funerals were held at All Saints Church, Waccamaw, as those that perished in the storm were laid to rest. This 173-year-old book has been witness to the many events that have shaped the history of Georgetown. Its connection to one of our earliest families makes it a truly remarkable object, and Alice's name, written in pencil by its owner, was almost lost to time. Alice's story was cut short by the wrath of Mother Nature, but this small book reminds us of Alice, her sisters, and everyone that was tragically killed in that storm. A true hidden history item, almost forgotten, but now preserved in the archives of the Georgetown County Library. Come back in January as we start 2020 with new objects and new stories of their connections to Georgetown County.